Hello, Kent back from Gusto here with the fourth episode. Oh, sorry. Yeah. Go ahead. Oh, uh, I'm Kelly Sutton. Still. Yeah, still, still Kelly, Kelly Sutton. Sutton. Still from Gusto. Still from Gusto. And I just ran right over him. Uh, so we're here with the fourth of a series of 12 uh, videos talking about the desirable properties of tests. I wrote mm -hmm. this piece called Test Desiderata mm -hmm. about the things. But that we'd like to see in tests yep. and sometimes you can't have them all and today we're going to talk about uh probably the first really tough trade-off which is yep. uh, are tests writable mm -hmm. um you'd like tests to be to to be easy to write so here's the here's the extreme example let's say we have a a little piece of code mm -hmm. it's very likely to be correct yep the consequences if it's wrong are tiny we don't really yeah. care to the business doesn't care and writing that code is going to take us 10 seconds mm -hmm. but writing the test for the code is going to take us eight hours yeah do we write the tests probably not no well there's right there's a there's a dogmatic answer yeah. which is oh you know we have 100 percent coverage and we're proud of it yeah and i would say mm -hmm. look Test writing is a trade-off. Yes. We're making an investment. We want mm -hmm. some sort of payoff. We're saying by the de definition of this, this scenario that the the payoff is small yep. and the investment is large. Mm -hmm. So we should definitely be thinking about, is this something that we that we want to test yep. or not? Yep. And sometimes the answer is no. Yep. So, but before you just give up on the tests, mm. the tests are offering you a, a form of feedback that you won't likely get otherwise, which is uh, the quality of the interface mm -hmm. that we use to invoke some logic. Yep. So if it takes us thousands of lines of tricky code to set up the objects in mm -hmm. order to exercise the, that one line of code that yep. doesn't really matter, uh, maybe that's not the interface we should have in the first place. Yeah, like like if our tests aren't writable, they're going to take us eight hours to write. That's telling us something about the code itself. Right. Not just that it doesn't just give us feedback about the tests and yeah. how we should test. So, show us this example. Uh, yeah. So we've got our hourly wage calculator, which we've used on the previous three episodes here, and we've you know augmented it in a certain way. Uh, and you know the system's growing, so we got to be able to track employees now. Okay. So on the left, we've got a little employee class. It's just a bundle of five values: name, address, weekly hours, hourly rate. And on the right, we've got our tests. So now our hourly wage calculator takes in an employee, right? Uh, and it uh, spits out you know how much you should be paid for the week. Got it. Right. Got it. And if we run the tests, they work. Always run the tests. Always run the tests. Uh, and so when it comes to writability, right, like let's say, let's write a test case for myself. Okay. okay. So context, uh, kill. And now I have to copy in, you know, so I got to change my name here. I got to change uh, my last name. We don't actually, maybe we could be neighbors. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. You, Sorry, Ken. All right. That's fine. Uh, hourly rate. A little bit less, of course. Okay. <laughs> well, you have the keyboard. Don't just roll over that easily. All right. Too late. Okay. Too late. Okay. Uh, 280. So 280. Yeah. We and we can run I these. can still do arithmetic. Yeah. Well, that's why you can pay the big bucks. Uh -huh. Yeah, apparently. <laughs> um, so let's, let's talk about this, this <laughs> test case. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> now, nah, this is in the personal finance yeah. blog. Not yeah. yet. Not yet. Um, so... But we, we had to specify a whole bunch of extra stuff. Yeah, for, the, for like the job that this class is doing, which is just making a pretty simple calculation. Right. right. Like we had to ask, like, okay, and, and you know, as you're typing this, we're asking, like, okay, does the first name matter right. for this calculator? Does the last name matter for this yeah. calculator? Right. Well, it's, it's in the test. It must matter. It must matter, right? Yeah. And then so whether it's us or our teammate that's cracking this open, right. Right, they're looking at this and they're saying, hey, do these three lines matter at all? Right. So there, there's this exercise that I do sometimes where I'll print out a test case mm -hmm. and then I'll take a highlighter and I'll explain the test case and I'll highlight the relevant facts. Ah, yes. And 
sometimes you'll get hundreds of lines of setup code and the yep. relevant facts are like six things. Yep. And and that's not a writable test, but it's not the fault of the test, it's the fault of the system yep. that we're testing and it gives us feedback that we might want to uh, narrow the interface that invokes whatever logic we're trying to test. Definitely. Definitely. And then that's a whole nother set of uh, challenges. Yep, and then like a similar thing that I like to do is just delete a line in the test setup code and see if the tests still pass. Right. Similar yeah. similar similar riff of just like what's actually needed here. Right. For me to write maybe a new test case. Right. And and if you really do need to specify a whole bunch of stuff to test a little bit of code, yeah. that's a design problem, that's not a testing problem. It's yeah, and then by a step back. And then by like like asking ourselves the questions about the writability of our tests, we've actually learned something new about the code. Got it. Okay, cool. so there you have it. Tests should be writable, and if they're not, think about the design. We will come back with the next episode, and we're going to talk about tests that are fast.